fellow Americans. Today, I want to update the world on our efforts to prevent Iran from acquiring a nuclear weapon. The Iranian regime is the leading state sponsor of terror. It exports dangerous missiles, fuels conflicts across the Middle East, and supports terrorist proxies and militias such as Hezbollah, Hamas, the Taliban, and Al-Qaeda. Over the years, Iran and its proxies have bombed American embassies and military installations, murdered hundreds of American service members, and kidnapped, imprisoned, and tortured American citizens. The Iranian regime has funded its long reign of chaos and terror by plundering the wealth of its own people. No action taken by the regime has been more dangerous than its pursuit of nuclear weapons and the means of delivering them. In 2015, the previous administration joined with other nations in a deal regarding Iran's nuclear program. This agreement was known as the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, or JCPOA. In theory, the so-called Iran deal was supposed to protect the United States and our allies from the lunacy of an Iranian nuclear bomb, a weapon that will only endanger the survival of the Iranian regime. In fact, the deal allowed Iran to continue enriching uranium and, over time, reach the brink of a nuclear breakout. The deal lifted crippling economic sanctions on Iran in exchange for very weak limits on the regime's nuclear activity and no limits at all on its other malign behavior, including its sinister activities in Syria, Yemen, and other places all around the world. In other words, at the point when the United States had maximum leverage, this disastrous deal gave this regime, and it's a regime of great terror, many billions of dollars, some of it in actual cash, a great embarrassment to me as a citizen and to all citizens of the United States. A constructive deal could easily have been struck at the time, but it wasn't. At the heart of the Iran deal was a giant fiction that a murderous regime desired only a peaceful nuclear energy program. Today, we have definitive proof that this Iranian promise was a lie. Last week, Israel published intelligence documents long concealed by Iran, conclusively showing the Iranians' regime and its history of pursuing nuclear weapons. The fact is, this was a horrible one-sided deal that should have never, ever been made. It didn't bring calm, it didn't bring peace, and it never will. In the years since the deal was reached, Iran's military budget has grown by almost 40% while its economy is doing very badly. After the sanctions were lifted, the dictatorship used its new funds to build nuclear-capable missiles, support terrorism, and cause havoc throughout the Middle East and beyond. The agreement was so poorly negotiated that even if Iran fully complies, the regime can still be on the verge of a nuclear breakout in just a short period of time. The deal sunset provisions are totally unacceptable. If I allowed this deal to stand, there would soon be a nuclear arms race in the Middle East. Everyone would want their weapons ready by the time Iran had theirs. Making matters worse, the deal's inspection provisions lack adequate mechanisms to prevent, detect, and punish cheating, and don't even have the unqualified right to inspect many important locations, including military facilities. 
Not only does the deal fail to halt Iran's nuclear ambitions, but it also fails to address the regime's development of ballistic missiles that could deliver nuclear warheads. Finally, the deal does nothing to constrain Iran's destabilizing activities, including its support for terrorism. Since the agreement, Iran's bloody ambitions have grown only more brazen. In light of these glaring flaws, I announced last October that the Iran deal must either be renegotiated or terminated. Three months later, on January 12th, I repeated these conditions. I made clear that if the deal could not be fixed, the United States would no longer be a party to the agreement. Over the past few months, we have engaged extensively with our allies and partners around the world, including France, Germany, and the United Kingdom. We have also consulted with our friends from across the Middle East. We are unified in our understanding of the threat and in our conviction that Iran must never acquire a nuclear weapon. After these consultations, it is clear to me that we cannot prevent an Iranian nuclear bomb under the decaying and rotten structure of the current agreement. The Iran deal is defective at its core. If we do nothing, we know exactly what will happen. In just a short period of time, the world's leading state sponsor of terror will be on the cusp of acquiring the world's most dangerous weapons. Therefore, I am announcing today that the United States will withdraw from the Iran nuclear deal. In a few moments, I will sign a presidential memorandum to begin reinstating U.S. nuclear sanctions on the Iranian regime. We will be instituting the highest level of economic sanction. Any nation that helps Iran in its quest for nuclear weapons could also be strongly sanctioned by the United States. America will not be held hostage to nuclear blackmail. We will not allow American cities to be threatened with destruction. And we will not allow a regime that chants death to America to gain access to the most deadly weapons on Earth. Today's action sends a critical message. The United States no longer makes empty threats. When I make promises, I keep them. In fact, at this very moment, Secretary Pompeo is on his way to North Korea in preparation for my upcoming meeting with Kim Jong-un. Plans are being made, relationships are building, hopefully a deal will happen. And with the help of China, South Korea, and Japan, a future of great prosperity and security can be achieved for everyone. As we exit the Iran deal, we will be working with our allies to find a real, comprehensive, and lasting solution to the Iranian nuclear threat. This will include efforts to eliminate the threat of Iran's ballistic missile program, to stop its terrorist activities worldwide, and to block its menacing activity across the Middle East. In the meantime, powerful sanctions will go into full effect. If the regime continues its nuclear aspirations, it will have bigger problems than it has ever had before. Finally, I want to deliver a message to the long-suffering people of Iran. The people of America stand with you. It has now been almost 40 years since this dictatorship seized power and took a proud nation hostage. Most of Iran's 80 million citizens have sadly never known an Iran that prospered in peace with its neighbors and commanded the admiration of the world. But the future of Iran belongs 
to its people. They are the rightful heirs to a rich culture and an ancient land. And they deserve a nation that does justice to their dreams, honor to their history, and glory to God. Iran's leaders will naturally say that they refuse to negotiate a new deal. They refuse, and that's fine. I'd probably say the same thing if I was in their position. But the fact is, they are going to want to make a new and lasting deal, one that benefits all of Iran and the Iranian people. When they do, I am ready, willing, and able. Great things can happen for Iran, and great things can happen for the peace and stability that we all want in the Middle East. There has been enough suffering, death, and destruction. Let it end now. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. This will make America much safer. Is Thank Secretary you very much. Secretary Pompeo bringing the DKB home? Secretary Pompeo is right now going to North Korea. He will be there very shortly in a matter of virtual, probably an hour. Uh, he's got meetings set up. We have our meeting scheduled. We have our meeting set. The location is picked, the time and date, everything is picked, and we look forward to have a very great success. We think uh, relationships are building with North Korea. We'll see how it all works out. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. But it can be a great thing for North Korea, South Korea, Japan, and the entire world. We hope it all works out. Thank you very much. Are everybody. the Americans being free? Are the Americans being free? Are the Americans coming home with the husband? We're all going be finding out. We will soon be finding out. It would be a great thing if they are. All right, thank you very much, guys, for listening. Peace of Christ to all. And today we start our uh, uh, talking about the new topic, which is involving Islam anyway. You know, uh, me, myself, I'm not in the favor of politics, but we like it or not, politics is uh, have a huge impact in our life, all of us. Uh, a president or a leader of a country, either he build a country or he destroy a country. Many nations were destroyed because they got a stupid president. And this is exactly what was happening during the time of Obama. You know, USA have sanctions almost for 30 years over uh, Iran. And uh, where the time came and the American almost getting the fruit of those sanctions, Obama, he came with the rescue plan to save the Iranian regime from collapsing. If you remember, when Obama, he signed the agreement with the Iranian, the Iranian people, they were striking in the street, going crazy, asking for the regime to leave, etc. Why? Because there's no jobs, there's no money. Uh, those regime are a bunch of thieves. Their money is in Switzerland. Uh, they are, you know, the, the mullahs are, are, are rich and the, and the people are poor. And then the filthy Obama came with his solution to save Iran, and he signed the deal with Iran. This is exactly what happened. Now, since Obama, and who is obviously in the bed with those terrorists, he left the White House. What is the reason for Trump to stay with the deal which is against USA big time? Iran, since we signed the deal with them, they became stronger, richer, and they are extending their arms like an octopus all over the Middle East. Iran is no more a country exists in Iran. If we go right now in the map, and let us do that, so we can understand what we are talking about. 
if we open the map, let us see. All right. We will use Google Earth so we can give you a better idea of what we are talking about. All right. Let us go and look for Iran. And we will show you what's happening in this area and why Trump he needed to make a decision otherwise things is really getting so horrible you see Iran as you see here in this map Iran is a big country is not a small country uh, if you look here with me in the map let us see let us show you the neighbors of this country. Here, we have Iraq. In this line in the borders here, this is Iraq. Iraq now is controlled by the Shia. So we can say that Iran now is not Iran no more, is Iran plus Iraq. Because remember, everything in those territories is based on religion. Not It's not the same as in Europe. Like Germany is Germany, and France is a France, and England is England. And what makes them united is not religion, it is business. Those what make them united is religion. And this is why the Western... They don't understand what we are talking about because the mentality of the Western is far away from what's happening in the ground in those countries. The problem with the Western, including American, when you speak about religion, they think that only fool people speak about religion. Only people, only people who they are fool, they are they are the one who want to follow religion. But in the same time, they want to make deals with the fool. All this country is based on religion. They claim that anyone who follows religion is a mad person. This is what the liberals, they want to teach their children, right? But yet they are the one who is in favor to sleep in the bed and have sex with the regime of Iran. All the filthy leaders of Europe right now, they are barking at Trump, saying we will not accept any sanction with Iran. We will do business as normal. Why? Because simply all what they care for is money. You see, they speak too much about a human right. In Iran, people are hanged in the street for leaving Islam. In Iran, people are killed for being gays or lesbian or being an atheist. In Iran, if you say one statement, if a woman, she show her hair, she's arrested. Yet, the Europeans suddenly, they don't care really for anything. It's called a human right. They care for a human right only if you don't pay, let us say, that the jizya. You see, the jizya of Islam is a practice by the European. If you pay us, we go blind. It doesn't matter what they do. The same as they did with the Saudi. In Saudi Arabia, the Saudi, they practice everything ISIS and the same as Iran. And, you know, like uh, at least the American, they make every year a list of uh, crimes the Saudi, they commit. It's coming from the foreign ministry of USA. Officially, every year is published. The European, they go blind. It doesn't matter what do you do. Mr. Macaroni, the president of uh, France, I call him Macaroni, he was just there last month in Iran doing what? Why you went there? Why you went there? Because simply money, it's all about money, nothing personal. Human rights doesn't count. As long as they have money, they will pay us. We make good money from them. Then we will not go and do sanctions. So the European, they don't care really for anything. It's called the human right. And the American, at the same time, they are—they had the same hypocrisy. 
they are not fighting Iran because of human rights as we heard from Trump the problem is bigger because they can go and go blind too if the Iranian do what the American want so the whole world is swimming with hypocrisy but the good thing about what Trump did that Iran now is expanding its force if we make this map uh, smaller a little bit or let us say yeah Iran now is not in Iran no more this is the Yemen this is a country called Yemen I'm sure many of you heard of it Yemen most of it is controlled by al Houthi al Houthi is a Shia group who they believe that their leadership belong to Iran so Iran now it is not here only it is here Iran now is not here only it is in Iraq Iran is not in Iran only it is in Syria 80% of Syria is occupied by Iranian militant Shia militant Iran is all over in Lebanon in the borders of Israel Iran is building military camps all over Africa in many countries we can name them one by one actually there's many videos in YouTube you can watch the Iranian regime Hezbollah uh, uh, opening branches for Hezbollah all over Africa one of the biggest banks who was shut down finally by the Canadian government finally this is how stupid this government is is owned by Hezbollah in Canada so the Iranian regime is a, a, now became a big octopus because of the deal of Obama Obama he opened the doors for them to go and be everywhere legally officially before nobody will have nobody even have an embassy for the Iranian because they have sanctions on them this is a terrorist country now the embassy of Iran is open in every country in Europe which means the Iranian if they want to kidnap me right now they can kidnap me I can be walking in the street and if I am a person who live in Germany they can kidnap me put me in a trunk give me some drugs put me in a box and nobody open the box of an embassy and they will ship you immediately to Iran they can kidnap any of you we allowed a terrorist regime to have an official name and give them the protection which all countries get for they are diplomat so now the Iranian regime they have their intelligence all over Europe and they are opening their branches everywhere expanding so Trump if he did not do something now in 20 years Iran is going to be a lot bigger than what you can imagine in the other hand Trump is a smart man he did this in a perfect time the Saudi which is this country which is a huge country in the Arabian Peninsula actually most of it under the control of the Saudi as we see in the map the Saudi they are number one country feeling the threat of Iran this is Saudi Arabia the Saudi they present the Muslim Sunni in the world at least the official point or official stand of the Muslim Sunni yesterday the Shia in Lebanon they won most of the parliament chairs in the election of Lebanon and they stormed the Sunni territory in Beirut and they were screaming I can say it in Arabic he said he 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 Beirut Sarat Shia, which mean hey 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 Beirut became Shia and they were attacking people in the street you know they are terrifying the people the next is they, they will take over they will take over the the uh, Beirut the the west of Beirut which is a Sunni Beirut is is, is uh, divided to two uh, two section east of Beirut is a pure Christians and Hezbollah will not dare to go there uh, but now they are humiliating the Shia this is the Sunni so obviously the Shia is a growing by money because money money is main reason for the for the Shia power to grow 
uh, all in all those territories and the money is coming from Obama help where he left all the sanctions on them and not only that he gave them all the money which was reserved in USA banks which belonged to the previous king of Iran the Shah we gave them a huge gift you know take it and suddenly they are in they found a lot of money in their pocket and now they are extending their business terrorist business all over so Trump now what he is doing it's a perfect time the Israeli they feel the threat of of Iran more than any time before because as we said Iran right now is not in Iran which is a country far away from Israel Iran now they have missiles they can arrive easy to Tel Aviv Iran now control most of the country of Syria which is a few kilometers from the borders of uh, it's like it's like a hundred kilometer from the from the borders to, to hit Tel Aviv so they can attack Israel from here they can attack Israel from here and they can attack Israel from Iraq from here so the Israeli they have a very uh, real concern about the coming war the coming war will not be this is we're talking about missiles now but in reality the war will be bigger than just missiles shooting missiles at each other is going to be big because the Iranian as we said they are now surrounding uh, 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 Israel all the south of Lebanon if we look here in the map this is the map <clears throat> This is Haifa. Here we have Lebanon. Let us make a line so people they will understand what we are talking about. All right. Here we have Lebanese borders, and here we have Shia controlling the south of Lebanon. This is Syria. This is Syria, which means, as we said now, the Shia are controlling a huge part of it. So the Shia are here. The Shia are here. And the Shia are all over Syria, all over Iraq, all over Iran. And they are trying to establish even their bases inside Egypt. Spread Shiaism between the Muslim Sunni in Egypt. Actually, there's a huge brigade of uh, the, what they call them the Mujahideen in, the, in Gaza. is a huge brigade which is called, uh, uh, let me remember the name, not Hamas, the other one. Hmm. Uh, uh, Aqsa. those are Shia militant and all their sponsored all their sponsor money is coming from Iran so Iran is involving inside Israel big deal and the Israeli because previously always they have a, a coward prime minister who don't dare really to go in war with Iran he was hoping maybe one day somebody will go in war with them. Why wouldn't go in war? Like, why wouldn't fight them and put this burden on us? Let somebody else do it. So they made a wrong decision and waited too long. And now Iran became bigger and bigger and bigger and stronger and stronger and stronger. And when Obama he left the sanctions, Iran was able to buy legally any kind of weapon they want because this was part of the deal as long they are not attempting to build a nuclear weapon and they start using and buying parts to establish their own missile system which means they don't have really their own missile system but what they do they buy from north korea they buy from uh, russia they buy from even from europe and then they make a missile by putting those things together but all of this happened because of the stupid uh, Obama it was Obama who made this dream happen to Iran to come true and now Trump now Trump by making this decision he will put a lot of a pressure you will not believe it you see 
uh, uh, sanctions from America. He, uh, uh, Trump, he said something very important. I don't know if you guys, if you notice, he said in the most maximum level, which means this sanction will not be a joke. It's not going to be a sanction about you will not buy rice. This guy, he would sanction and everything have to do with machineries. He don't want the Iranian to go hungry because the people of Iran, they are people like us. We don't want them to die from hunger. We are fighting the regime. We don't want to fight the Iranian poor people, especially, you know, uh, regardless if they are Christians or Muslims, by the way. But you need to know there's a lot of Christians in Iran. And there is a lot of people who hate Islam in Iran. And they are seeking freedom from this cult. Actually, my experience with the Iranian, they are wonderful people. And most of them who leave Iran, they leave Islam. The biggest converted church in USA ever I met or I saw, it was an Iranian Christian church. I remember once I was driving my car, I saw a huge signs in the park. You know, like the, 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 the roadway is high and, and the park is down. And they have like Arabic sign, but I could not understand. So I know this is this is Pharisee, because you see, you know, for me Arabic is my first language. They use Arabic letters, but it's not Arabic words. But I, if I read, I can understand. So anyway, I walk by, and I start walking between them, and they have books. And I look at the first table in my way, and they have the Bible in Iranian language. So I said, "Oh, this is this is Bible." I said, "Yeah." He said, he, no, he thought I am a Muslim, so he started preaching to me about Jesus. I said, my friend, I'm Christian. He said, hallelujah, you know. So he, I told him, so what is this? He said, all of this, all of us, we are Christians here. This is this is a, a converted church from around the state. All those tens of thousands are Christians who left Islam. I could not believe it. You know, when I saw it first time, I said, man, America is screwed. All of those are Muslims here? All of those are, you know? So the surprise, it was the opposite. All of them, they are Iranian Muslims who became Christians. I remember when I was serving in the army, there was a, there was a sergeant with me in, my, in, in the office. His name is Ruhi. Right away from his name, I noticed that he is an Iranian, but I did not see his office yet. I did not know where my office, he is the one who welcomed me in the, in the station. So he said, sir, let me take you to, uh, to your office. And I went, and then he gave me an office, and he there is an office there in the other side, have a big cross in it. And I said to myself, why, man, I want to I take that office if it's empty, you know? So I moved him, I moved myself, and I said there, I thought this room like empty, and I would choose whatever office I want. And then suddenly he came back, and he said, um, um, so uh, this is my office. You know, he's shy to tell me, you took my office. He said, oh, okay. I thought like this room is empty and the whole room is for me. He said, no, actually, I will be sharing the room with you here. And this is my office. I said, so who, what, the, who, this, this cross for who? He said, this is my cross. Wherever I go, wherever I move, I take it and I put it with me. And the cross is a huge. It's not like, and he put it in the front right away next to the American flag. A wonderful Christian who accepted the Messiah, who became Christian, and he was working hard to make his father accept the Messiah too. So to make it clear, we are not against the Iranian. Iranian, they don't like Islam in general. And you know what? Even if somebody he likes Islam, that will not make him. Uh, you know, I mean, we don't want to go in war just because you are a Muslim. If a person, he don't want to fight anyone, he's a peaceful man, he is a good person. I mean, this is not his fault if he's born of an... Of a Muslim fam. The problem is that we have a filthy regime who scream every day in the morning, saying death to America, death to Israel. You see, those people they don't drink coffee in the morning. Before they drink their coffee, they say death to America, death to Israel. You can go right now and search on YouTube. It's not even like a secret. This is what they teach children. This is what so you have you have to ask yourself why in the world Obama he signed that agreement. Who is the one under the sanctions? Us or them? You know what I mean? If it was America under sanctions sanctions, and now we have to sign because we need to buy machines. I understand what Obama did, but they are the one under the sanctions, and this is America, the most powerful country in the world. 
So why he signed this sanction simply signed the agreement because Obama is a very corrupt filthy who is in bed With this regime and he is a Muslim like them at the end of the day And he want to sponsor Hamas and he want to sponsor every evil terrorist groups in the Middle East The plan was very simple Iran is number one country who funded the Muslims Brotherhood many people they don't understand that the Muslim Brotherhood grow because of Iran you see the the, the first head center or the, let us say the first office of the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt was bought and purchased by Iran this is this is history the first ever office for the Muslim Brotherhood was purchased in in, in, in Egypt by Iran in a very fancy nice area paid in cash by the Iranian mullahs so the Iranian from the beginning even before the revolution they were investing in the Muslims Brotherhood and the plan of Obama for he is I believe he is a member of the Muslim Brotherhood that he was going to establish an Islamic state and I said that many years ago if you go and watch my videos with uh, uh, my, my radio show with the brother Osama Daktok uh, when uh, 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 when Obama he won the election I said Obama will never leave until he established an Islamic State people they start saying what this guy is talking about what Islamic State and then we have an Islamic State happening and this was the plan but the plan of Obama was not Isis the plan the plan of Obama was something different if we look here in the map this is Iran sorry this is uh, tu uh, Turkey Turkey right now is controlled by the party of Erdogan which is the the party of justice which is simply another name of the Muslims Brotherhood so this is Muslims Brotherhood country Obama he sponsored the war in Syria so he can replace the Alawi regime which don't care about God and they don't care about Muhammad and those people they drink whiskey more than and vodka more than they drink water so they wanted to replace the Syrian regime with Muslims Brotherhood more than 90% of the population of Jordan are Muslims Brotherhood Egypt after Obama he took over became under the control of the Muslims Brotherhood and the Muslim Brotherhood they won the election and what people do not notice because many people are naive they just watch you watch news and cartoon because our our news is just a cartoon they bring you four girls in the screen and they are wearing short skirt and one of them she will put a leg in the top of the other leg and so you can see her panty and you forget about the news and what she is saying what people do not want to see that this is was a surrender of Israel by all those countries who are going to be controlled by the Muslim Brotherhood and some of them already huge ones controlled by Muslim Brotherhood Egypt is a 100 million population the president became a Muslim Brotherhood Turkey is 100 million population right now still they are under the Muslims Brotherhood Syria is about 24 to 26 million the plan was to make the Muslim Brotherhood take over but this one did not succeed because of the Russian thank God Jordan right now as I speak the king of Jordan is exists for a very simple reason because Israel and America protected him otherwise the Muslim Brotherhood they will eat him alive all the population not some all the population are Muslims Brotherhood this is why we see Hamas is a very growing and very strong militant groups in uh, the West Bank. Why? Because most of the Jordanian and most of this territory is controlled by Hamas. And Hamas is what? Hamas is a militant brigade of the Muslims Brotherhood. In the last few years, the island of Dubai, if we can call it an island, they did discover that the Muslim Brotherhood preparing to take over their country they have a plan imagine the Muslim Brotherhood they have eight 
eight ministers in the uh, in the United uh, Arab Emirate government they are Muslim Brotherhood eight including the Ministry of Education which means they control all university and they insist that they want to take over the education so they can spread their ideology between students as Muslim Brotherhood Muslim Brotherhood control Qatar in full the Prince of Qatar is a Muslim Brotherhood member and he is their major finance support and Muslim Brotherhood they were planning to take over Saudi Arabia this is why in the last few years we have United Arab Emirates here and the Saudi they announce the Muslim Brotherhood as a terrorist groups and they start arresting whoever a member of this group they can find because if they did not do that their uh, the country is going to be under the Muslim Brotherhood guaranteed they were growing so fast so the plan of Obama was very simple he was the first one to encourage the leave of the president of Egypt and you know if you ask yourself why is that the president of Egypt Hosni Mubarak he was the best friend for the American for the last 30 years this is Egypt so what is the business of Obama to be the first one to enforce this guy to leave actually the fact if of America at that time under Obama and under the fifth Hillary Clinton did not say go this guy will stay until now you see what you see in TV that there is revolution blah blah this is all is fake behind the scene there is super force working those people there you can move them easy they are poor they are hungry there's no jobs you can move them spend some millions and you will see people go on the street so the millions came from Qatar all the way to Egypt the poor people of Egypt and I'm not insulting the Egyptian give them some sandwiches tell them some shawarma if you go and strike in the street they go give them a wage of one week they will go they will throw rocks they will do whatever you want but people have no jobs and they are already frustrated from this regime so all what you need is just to make some smoke and the fire will start and this is exactly what they did in Egypt the first one to announce that the president of Egypt have to leave it was Obama but how Obama he do that this is our friend this is the best friend America ever have because the plan is we get rid of him and we replace them with the Muslim Brotherhood and this is exactly what happened they get rid of this idiot and then they got the Muslim Brotherhood taken over Egypt same what happened in Syria when the little tiny uh, uh, fight happened between the Syrian regime and some Muslim Sunni in Syria America and Obama was the first to sponsor the movement inside Syria or let us say that the, the 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 war so they start if you remember McCain he flew he, he fly all the way to Syria and he went to this area imagine here in Syria and he met with terrorist Syrian terrorist Allahu Akbar group Al-Qaeda group and he gave them a hug and you can go and watch the video it's, it's, it's a video it's not like it's not like in news somebody say it somebody you know it is in in YouTube you can search for it and Obama he ordered to spend hundreds of millions of dollars sponsoring those terrorist groups who later became instead of became you know, the plan of Obama as we said is to make the Muslim Brotherhood take over but what happened surprise surprise the one was taken over was al-qaeda and was isis and they are the one who they were more getting the attention from everybody because they were able to do better in the fight so they wanted syria to fail into the muslim brotherhood and that will make an empire or a new empire of the muslim brotherhood to take you know taking over this area the plan was very simple let us draw the map the Muslim Brotherhood already in Turkey here then we move towards Syria and we take over Syria and when we already took over Egypt this is Egypt 
and then in one day they can take over Jordan. Jordan don't even have an army. Jordan is the most weak country. You know, if you have uh, uh, four thousand fighters, you can take over the country. Uh, so the plan is all this area will become a Muslim Brotherhood empire, the Islamic State. In the same time, if you remember when the uh, the American ambassador was killed in Libya, Hillary Clinton, she was arming the Muslims Brotherhood. And this is why actually our ambassador was killed because they were arming the Muslim Brotherhood against another terrorist groups. So the other terrorist groups, they attacked the American embassy and they killed the ambassador for his arming their enemies. So the plan is to expand this territory of the Muslim Brotherhood to Libya. And to Libya is a huge country. And then we heard the news that Tunisia, the Muslim Brotherhood, won the election. So now we have a huge empire from here all the way here is Muslim Brotherhood. You believe it? That is the Islamic State Obama was trying to build. And the stupid American and the stupid European, they have no idea what's going. But everything the devil he planned for collapsed. And that because of the help of the Russian. We have to admit, while the European were helping the terrorists, the Russian, they were fighting them, and they made all their dreams collapse. All their dreams. All the weapon we sent to what we call our friend was going to ISIS. So the stupid American, they were arming ISIS, and they play blind, like they play, we don't know. I mean, like, well, yeah, and did you hear uh, Joe Biden saying, Oh, you know, yes, our friend were arming ISIS, uh, but they thought they are arming the good ones. Uh huh. You thought? Have you ever heard of a country have no intelligence? I mean, do you think really a gun will go and we will not know where it's going? They knew. So, all the plan they had collapsed, and that was happening for major reason is Russian, and the second reason is the Emirati and the Saudi. As we said to you, when the Emirati discover that uh, uh, the Muslim Brotherhood trying to take over the country, here, let us go here again. When the Emirati notice that the, 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 the Muslim Brotherhood they want to take over the country, they start arresting them and they put sanctions in every bank trying to help them and send them money. Same, then the Saudi they follow, and that was a big disaster for the Muslim Brotherhood. Suddenly, all their plan is collapsing. Now they have two Islamic countries announcing Muslim Brotherhood as terrorist organization. And imagine in Europe, Muslim Brotherhood are not terrorist organization. Imagine in America until now, Obama, Trump did not announce Muslim Brotherhood as a terrorist organization until now. For very simple reason. America need Qatar and Qatar is the head quarter of the Muslim Brotherhood terrorist so the plan of the Muslim Brotherhood is we will give America what they want in the Middle East in return they let us go alone and we take we take control and this is exactly what's happening until now until now Trump Trump he go in the White House you remember he said uh, uh, Qatar is sponsoring terrorism so what happened after that? Why he changed his mind? The prince of Qatar, like a dog, he ran away, ran to Trump, kissed his shoes, kissed his ass. He says to him, whatever you want, what do you want? We will sign all kind of business deal with you. We will sign all, we will buy whatever weapon you want to sell us. All our money is for you. So Trump, now he go mute. Benefit, you know, business. But the plan is that all this area will be a Muslim Brotherhood empire. Still, we go back to Iran. Iran have the benefit of having a Muslim Brotherhood empire. Why? Because Iran, as we said, invested for a long time on the Muslim Brotherhood leadership. You see, the dream of Iran is the following, is to unite the Shia and the Sunni 
and to make one state and they will spread using the Muslim Brotherhood to allow them to extend and spread Shiaism inside Islamic Sunni countries by the help of the Muslim Brotherhood now some of you they might say why the Muslim Brotherhood when I do that the Muslim Brotherhood are businessmen they don't care they use God and names of religion for their business they are not the same as Isis or Al-Qaeda they are different they have different mentality the mentality of those Muslim Brotherhood is have to have the good jobs for themselves their members to make money they use violence to do that they are terrorists too but they are not really uh, uh, let us say they use religion but the target is something else the target is to rule authority money wealth they are the devil itself and Iran knew that so they in order for them to get inside the Muslim Sunni territory they need the Muslim Brotherhood which is very loyal to Iran you will never see Hamas going against Iran why because Hamas funded for many years by Iran how they can go against the only one mostly supporting them so the plan was dirty and now Trump by putting sanctions in Iran all those countries which is doing business including Europe they have to find themselves in a deep garbage if really they decide to go against Trump because nobody can go against America and I'm not talking here because I'm an American I'm talking about America the super powerful country if America puts sanctions on any country that country will freeze and Trump he made it clear that he is going to make a highest level of sanctions in Iran so if a France want to go and have business as normal with the Iranian and that will make the France really suffer badly for many many years and it's not worth it for the French so now what they will do I expect in the coming step the European they will try to be the middleman between Iran and Trump the same as he did with Korea the Iranian they have to come and kiss the shoes of Trump say what do you want we will sign so now they say no we don't agree no we don't uh, accept but soon they will feel the heat of the sanctions and they will feel what Trump is going to do next because I believe Trump will not stop with the sanctions sanctions is just like at the beginning of something else to come and something else to come it might be a military attack and this time America will not attack alone the Saudi are desperately waiting for something to happen so they can join forces with the Israeli with the with, with the uh, with the American and whoever want to join the fight uh, fight already USA have big a huge number of troops in Jordan and we have a big base on Qatar now Qatar is very close to Iran and Qatar is a friend to Iran but what they can do I mean they can say to the American no they don't dare America will take over the island in five minutes actually five minutes I'm exaggerating maybe five seconds so if something happened if the Iranian decide to be stubborn they will suffer a very bad consequence in the coming stage because there's a lot you know there's a lot of tensions in the area and here now we have the Muslim Sunni are so upset from the Shia you see if you go watch the Muslim Sunni news they are not really talk they, they don't talk about the Christian infidels no more they don't talk about the Jewish infidels no more they are talking about the Shia the enemy if you notice if you hear the news that the Saudi for the first time in their history they allow airlines to fly using the Saudi airspace to fly to Israel that never happened before so now if an, if a uh, uh, of an Indian airline is coming to Tel Aviv they can fly over the Saudi airspace nobody asks himself why is that happening like what happened did the Saudi sign a peace agreement with the Israeli what happened is more than a peace agreement under the carpet the Saudi are already signing an agreement of war against Iran you see they say the enemy of my friend sorry the, the 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 enemy of my enemy is my friend this is exactly what's happening between the Saudi and the Israeli 
Imagine the Sunni who hate the Jews to death. Now they are joining forces with the Jews because this is the only hope they have to defeat Iran. Saudi, they cannot defeat Iran. They are nothing compared to Iran. What is important about the Saudi is not an army they have, is the money they have. The Emirati, they cannot fight Iran. Iran can swallow them like eating a sandwich. We cannot compare. This is a country of 80 to 90 million in, in citizen. So you can imagine how big uh, 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 the population and how big the army can be. In one day, they can ask for reserve, you know, soldiers of uh, 3 million. The whole country population of Emirat is not even 200,000. The rest are foreigners. So how Emirat can fight those people? They cannot. But who is holding Iran from swallowing all those countries' neighborhood is the American. Otherwise, they will eat Saudi Arabia overnight. So Trump is doing the right movement. He have many strong point, let us say, to depend on. He have the Israeli sponsoring all the action he he did. Actually, it is it is one hundred percent for the benefit of Israel. He have the Muslim Sunni, he have the Saudi, he have the Emirati, he have the Bahraini. As an example, Bahrain, you see this island here? Many people do not know what's happening in this island. This island is a small island between Saudi Arabia and Qatar. But the problem is that more than 70% of this island or Shia if not more and the king is Sunni and the Shia they want to take over and if they take over all the Shia here they are in love with Iran they are they are leaded by the mullahs of Iran so if Iran was able to take over this island that will make Iran not anymore in the other side of the Persian Gulf is going to be in the wrong side, in the Arabian side. And this is why religion play a big role here. What is the connection between those people and Iran? Shia, that's it, the sect. The Saudi, in order to stop the Iranian majority population, or to say Shia majority population, they did this. If you notice with me here, there is a bridge built between Qatar, sorry, between Bahrain. You see how small this Bahrain is? Small, tiny island, and it's like a village, you know? It's a country, supposedly, yes, but it's a, it's a small, tiny island. But for the Saudi, it's extremely important because if the Iranian take over, and the, the Iranian, they will not take over by saying, we Iranian take over, they will not put Iranian flag, they will make a new state of Bahrain controlled by Shia. And then they will do the same as they did with Hezbollah in Lebanon. So what the Saudi did, they established here a bridge between Bahrain and Saudi Arabia. If we zoom in here, let us see if we can get in the bridge. I'm not sure if we can. It looks like we cannot. But anyway, you can see the bridge, right? Usually, you can, you know, look like Google are not allowed to have their uh, map there. Uh, so this is a bridge they built for a very simple reason. It's a smaller bridge, not long, but costs a lot of money because they wanted this island to be connected to them in order to limit the 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 threat of Iran. So now, what the what the Bahraini people they are doing? If you are a Muslim Sunni and come in from Pakistan. And if you are loyal, you prove that you are willing to defend this country, they will give you citizenship in order to make balance with the Shia. As I said, the Shia are the majority. So everything you see around you there is about Shia Sunni. Shia Sunni war. America role in this is not, they don't care really who is Shia who is Sunni. They care who is the one whose his ideology is to fight America. 
the Saudi as a government they are not against America but the Sunni as religion they are against America so the American they have no choice except to use what they have for now which is a Sunni government which is not against America and they are doing all kind of deals with the American and they are not siding with anyone against USA so they are going they are arming the Saudi preparing for the coming war and the arm they are giving them it might help a little bit but they are no match whatsoever to fight Iran but by the help of all those forces around Trump he can put Iran in a big trouble especially if he is able to force the European countries to join him but until now look like they are not really willing to do so I saw many announcements from many European uh, 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 official they are saying it clear and loud that we will not our our deal with Iran is still to continue which actually will make it hard for Iran not for the benefit of Iran because let me tell you why if not all of them they cancel their deal with Iran that's mean Iran is still still have to obey the deal which means they cannot extend their deal of nuclear weapon and they can start you cannot start building because still they are signing a deal with the European the European are part of the deal so if they decide to say no we will not be part of it then they will lose the European business and for now they are they need it so this is a win-win for America lose lose for Iran regardless if the European join USA or not however at the end of the day the European they will find themselves they have problem of not going out of the deal because all European companies who will sell any kind of whatever they put inside the sanction those European countries they cannot do business with USA no more and nobody can risk such a thing so even if the official of Europe they say we will not follow Trump in his announcement the European companies they will follow Trump automatically because nobody will risk his business with America is my is what I'm saying guys are clear is what I'm saying clear or I'm making I'm making things complicated because remember the sanctions in in Iran is going to follow sanctions in companies not in Europe which mean if I am a German company and I sell weapon to Iran then the American they will put sanctions on me not in Germany so at the end of the day who care if the if, 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 uh, uh, of the Prime Minister or a minister said we don't agree with the Trump we will still doing business with Iran still the companies who deal business with Iran they will be sanctioned and they will suffer badly because you cannot compare the economy of Iran with the economy of USA it's about business not about like we they love America no it's about business at the end of the day the income let us say you guys the money the the import of product go through New York in one day is more than all the money of Saudi Arabia in a month just in one day this is how huge and powerful the power the 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 money in America so they can say we will not ac accept the sanctions of uh, of uh, Trump on Iran we would do business as normal but companies they will not like that and they will not do business with Iran unless they have no partnership with America to do any business with them uh, somebody saying to me are you paid by the lobby my friend I'm paid by everybody you like it or not get lost you see this is what they do to you the second you you get them busted you spank them are you paid by somebody <laughs> are you paid by the lobby <laughs> yeah I'm paid by the lobby uh, record me you stupid idiot coward are you paid by the lobby yeah I'm paid by the lobby you are paid by who what a donkey he left as a donkey he never came back as a horse so Trump he made a very very great decision and actually what I like about this guy there's things I don't like about him that he's a playboy he have a lot of uh, you know business behind the scene women blah 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 uh, you know but at the end of the day this is not my business you know this is not my this is really not my business this is his private life and everybody have his own whatever for me what I care about him 
he is a person who kept his promises everything he said before the election he did after the election I never saw a president did what he did all the promises he said he did all the promises previous president regardless if they are Democrat or Republican they they say they did not do this is a man who says something and he do what he say and this is what I like about him he said he will move the embassy to Jerusalem and he did do you know how many presidents before him they made the same promise all of them not even a single president did not make the same promise but not even of, the, of them one of them have the balls to do it Trump he did this is the man who you trust him saying I will do don't trust him saying I don't have a relationship with this woman but this is who, not my business <laughs> I mean who care <laughs> this is not my business we did not hire him to be a bishop or a priest correct this is not his job nobody is questioning his uh, uh, his uh, his uh, private behavior what do you do in your bedroom is your business none of my business I will question him if I hired him to be my bishop or to lead him in my church but he is not any of this so all of this will not affect me in the coming election and for sure I'm going to vote for him he make wrong decisions he will he make and he will do why not all of us we make wrong decisions sometime nobody can make perfect decisions always he did and he will do but that is not going to make him bad so today decision decision of Trump is a brilliant smart and strong after all those European countries saying to him clearly we will not support your, your your action we will not agree with you he still he do it this is a real man so uh, uh, for me Trump is a hero and I cannot imagine for sure how much the Israeli today are happy for what Trump he did you see the funny about Israel they always voted for Democrat the Jews always vote for the liberals because the Jews they have liberals mentality too which is a stupid mentality Israeli have a stupid mentality of liberals and always they vote for Democrat and they sponsor Democrat but nobody betrayed them as much as the Democrat they voted for Obama look what Obama did to them look what Obama did to them so you know uh, he did today a great decision I really I respect his decision and I hope he will follow it with something more powerful. And look how Trump is successful. The president of, uh, of Korea, when everybody was saying, oh, Trump is going to lead us to war. Oh, Trump, he will destroy the world. He will fight with Korea. Look what Korea, what happened? Because he put sanctions to the maximum, exactly what he's doing now to Iran. Korea could not take it no more. He forced, imagine Trump, he forced even China to stop selling them even oil. It is a Trump victory that he made Korea give up their weapon. And they want to go for peace now. If we have different president, the Korean, they will start, they, they will stay playing their games for the coming 60, 70 years, and maybe they will cause a nuclear war. Now we have a Muslim in the text. I don't know if this Muslim want to call us. We have Mr. Saif. How are you, Mr. Saif? How are you? We have a Muslim here. I thought we are out of Muslims because all of them they are they 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 they, they went to the black stone to get healed. I heard that if you kiss the black stone, you will get recover from disease, my friend. Is that true? As I know, the black stone spread diseases like crazy. Imagine thousands of people kissing the same stones every day. Yuck. <laughs> brother do you kiss the black stone yes you can imagine man you can imagine how much diseases in that spot inside the black stone yeah kiss me and get a virus 
But anyway, don't worry about virus. Allah, he liked those who sneeze, don't he? Have you ever heard of God? He says, Allah, he loved those who sneeze and he hate those who yawn. Anyway, you know, so today, the Iranian, tomorrow morning, they will be screaming as usual, death to America, and they will do it louder. But now, Trump is free to do what he need to do. And those Iranian regime, they better watch. Trump, he can harm them badly. This is America. America today, actually, is not the same as America in the time of Ronald Reagan. It's not the same. And I believe Trump next movement, if you want these sanctions to work, he have to reach into agreement with the Russian. This is the smart move he should do. The Russian, they don't care really for Iran as much they care for themselves. And if you can make an agreement with the, with the Russian that we will take sanctions and we will become a closer friends, then the Russian, they will sold Iran out. And then the Iranian, they will find no friends except the Turkish Erdogan. And let the Turkish Erdogan help them. He himself is collapsing. The economy of Turkey, the, the currency of Turkey, go check it out. If you are an employee in Turkey, your salary is not even enough to buy a shoe. So Iran, sanction in Iran is going to be successful if Trump, he decide to move and make a friendship, get closer to the Russian. And for sure, many, they will oppose this, but this is a very smart move. Russia is very important country in the world. And anyone want to fight Russia is a stupid fool. Actually, I can call him, announce him a donkey. Russia is not a joke. Russia is not Iran. Russia is not Saddam Hussein. Russia can destroy the earth more than 100, 200 times by pushing one bomb. So there's nobody want to play with the Russian. Russian are Christians at the end of the day. Why we want to be enemy with them? So we can be friends with the Russian. And we can share opportunity together. And we can build a good relationship. Same, same time, that will cut all the help of Iran. Because Russia control all and many countries around them. Many countries around Russia is controlled by the Russian. So if we make the Russian take our side, the sanctions in Iran will work perfectly. Because remember, Russia right now controlling even Syria. So the Iranian who exists in Syria, they will not dare even to fart if the Russian said no. So the Russian are very important for the Israeli, for the American, to be part of the sanctions on Iran. And let us see what Trump he would do. Is he going to close the circle on Iran or he will let the circle open from the side of the Russian and the side of the Turkish? He should put sanctions on Turkey too. And actually I know that I saw in the news that uh, right now the, the Congress is studying sanctions on the Turkish already, but it is sanctions about weapon, not about economy. Maybe next is going to be economy. And now the Turkish, they have an uh, election. We will see if uh, Erdogan will win again because the economy is doing so bad. And I don't know why in the world the Turkish people will elect such an idiot who made their country collapse. You see, when Erdogan came, he was doing smart things. As an example, he became a friend with the Syrian. With the Syrian here. So the borders is with Syria open for business and they made hundreds of millions of dollars every month from the Syrian. This is Syria. He made good relationship with the Iraqi. This is Iraq. And the same, a lot of money poured in from this country to Turkey. But by sponsoring the war in Syria, because as we said, they were planning to take over Syria by the Muslim Brotherhood, Syria now in the stage of collapse there is no businesses there's no money except war so there's no money coming from here no more iraq went in a war with isis the only money the turkey they were getting is from the oil of the syrian and the oil of the iraqi almost for free but that is not really much and worth it so erdogan he made a stupid decision erdogan in order to fix his problem he, he have no choice except to get closer to the russian 
so he opened his country to the Russian but the Russian don't do things for free the Russian they do things for their benefit if it's not for the benefit they will not do any business with you so he opened their business and that make a lot of business flow between the two countries but it was always for the benefit of the Russian not for the benefit of the Turkish so Erdogan now he did not he find that himself still doing doing stupid things so the the Russian the Russian uh, 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 gate is not right away with the with the with the, with the Turkish they have to go through Iran and Iran maybe it can be a solution for the Turkish and now the only one the only country who will have a benefit from those sanctions against Iran is the Turkish why because the Turkish they are in the borders and the Iranian they will start buying from the Turkish as they used to do before let us say the the American they forbid the Tur the, the Iranian from buying uh, heavy-duty machines what the Iranian they will do they will buy it as usual and that the carpet from the Turkish and for sure the Turkish car government they knew about it you know but they will not announce that we are doing business so this is will be a nerve or a blood vein for the for the Iranian to 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 survive, as actually they did through the sanctions for the last thirty years. So if Trump, if he want to do something right, he should put strike and put strong sanctions on Turkey if they are doing business with the Iranian, and he should lift the sanctions on the Russian, and that will give the Russian no reason to do business with the Iranian because America is more important this way the Iranian they are surrendered by all their enemies same time in Iraq USA still have their own troops and they can maintain the borders between Iraq and Iran and they can watch carefully if there is any smuggle from Iraq going to Iran it's very complicated but Trump he can be very successful and I will not be surprised if Trump he did some something more aggressive more than just sanctions I will not be surprised if Trump decide to bomb some nuclear facility and why not what the Iranian can do about it let them try this is the best way actually to finish this fight easy and fast destroy all their facility in a blink of an eye and it's going to take them another 20 years to build it and when they build it again destroy it again let them go back from zero what this sanctions for and what but sanctions as we said it's if it's give legitimate uh, let us say the legitimate reason for you to do something next so this is why I don't see what Trump he did is what he want to do it is a step for something else and I believe the step is to go in war maybe it's a limited war maybe it is a limited strike and maybe it's going to come to bigger thing but iran for sure is no match to fight usa anyway you know if you remember saddam hussein he have a war with the iranian for eight years eight years both are fighting the army of iraq and the army of iran so iraq here Iran is here eight years fighting and the Iranian they were not able to conquer Iraq and Iraqi were not able to conquer Iran but what I'm trying to say to you here the army who was able to fight Iran for eight years USA made it collapse in 48 hours Do you know what I mean? If Saddam Hussein army was able to fight Iran for eight years, and the Iranian they could not really conquer Iraq, and the Iraqi could not conquer Iran, which means almost they are equal. But USA was able to conquer Iraq in 48 hours. So how long is going to take USA to conquer Iran? One week? Because now they are stronger? Still nothing. You know what I mean? USA can crush 
Iran very easy. So, you know, some people they are worrying about things will happen. I believe nothing, nobody there, the Iranian, they will not there because that will be the end of the regime. The American, they will whip the regime out of this, uh, out of existence. So this is not really my concern. The Iranian, they will never, and when I say the Iranian, I mean the regime, they will never dare to go in real face-to-face -face war with the American because they knew they are no match. They can threat the Saudi, they can, uh, you know, they can do stupid things here and there, but they cannot really face the American. So this is a very good day, and I really appreciate what Trump he did. I uh, really support what he did. I support his movement to move the, the embassy to Jerusalem. Uh, if all Europeans are a bunch of cowards, they will not agree to move the embassy. We need to ask ourselves, isn't it this is the land of the Jews? Isn't it that's what our Bible says? Isn't it this is what history says? Everything in history speak that this is the land of the Jews. So why the Jews cannot have it? Because European today, they have a big population of Muslims inside and they are people of, uh, you know, they are doing business. But I heard today that in Sweden, they allow a mosque in Friday morning and Friday noon time to say Allahu Akbar by speakers. Why do you do that? Potatoes. The mayor of that city, obviously, he want to win the election in the Kimi election. And he have some Muslims in the city, so he want them to vote for him. As simple as that. Coward potatoes. They don't care really for the country. They care for their business. The same as, Mar you know, Sarkozy. Sarkozy, he signed, he signed a paper with 300 other European uh, celebrity. Uh, uh, and they send it to Al-Azhar University asking Al-Azhar to take verses out of the Quran because they teach hate. But Sarkozy is the same guy who was kissing the Muslims, hugging the Muslims, taking money from Al-Qazafi. How come when you are a president, you did not say we should take verses from the Quran off? Why now? You know? He is not in politics no more, and he will never be a president no more. So now he now he became a truthful. Before he was just a, a, a politician. All right. Uh, anyway, I believe this is a very good movement, and I really I sponsor what Trump he said. And there is something he really, uh, you see, I like the way Trump he lay out his speeches. Maybe I should play it again. Hold on. I don't know if you guys you notice what he he was saying in his uh, statement there. If we go back, um, if we go back here, let us see what he said. Terrorist missiles fuels conflicts across the Middle East and supports terrorist proxies and militias such as Hezbollah, Hamas, the Taliban, and Al Qaeda. Over the years, Iran and its proxies have bombed American embassies and military installations, murdered hundreds of American service members, and kidnapped, imprisoned, and tortured American citizens. Look here. How come the previous uh, administration never mentioned this to the American? Why did it not say that it was Iran who is sponsoring the terrorist Shia inside Iran, the insurgency, to go against the USA military inside Iraq? Why Obama never said that? Because they don't have the balls. They are coward and they are fake. And this is what I like about this guy. The Iranian regime has funded its long reign of chaos and terror by plundering the wealth of its own people. No action taken by the regime has been more dangerous than its pursuit of nuclear weapons and the means of delivering them. In 2015, the previous administration joined with other nations in a deal regarding Iran's nuclear program. This agreement was known as the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, or JCPOA. 
in theory, the so-called Iran deal was supposed to protect the United States and our allies from the lunacy of an Iranian nuclear bomb, a weapon that will only endanger the survival of the Iranian regime. In fact, the deal allowed Iran to continue enriching uranium and, over time, reach the brink of a nuclear breakout. The deal lifted crippling economic sanctions on Iran in exchange for very weak limits on the regime's nuclear activity and no limits at all on its other malign behavior, including its sinister activities in Syria, Yemen, and other places all around the world. In other words, at the point when the United States had maximum leverage, this disastrous deal gave this regime, and it's a regime of great terror, many billions of dollars, some of it in actual cash, a great embarrassment to me as a citizen and to all citizens of the United States. A constructive deal could easily have been struck at the time, but it wasn't. At the heart of the Iran deal was a giant fiction that a murderous regime desired only a peaceful nuclear energy program. Today, we have definitive proof that this Iranian promise was a lie. Last week, Israel published intelligence documents long concealed by Iran, conclusively showing the Iranians' regime and its history of pursuing nuclear weapons. The fact is, this was a horrible, one-sided deal that should have never, ever been made. It didn't bring calm, it didn't bring peace, and it never will. In the years since the deal was reached, Iran's military budget has grown by almost 40 percent, while its economy is doing very badly. After the sanctions were lifted, the dictatorship used its new funds to build nuclear-capable missiles, support terrorism, and cause havoc throughout the Middle East and beyond. The agreement was so poorly negotiated that even if Iran fully complies, the regime can still be on the verge of a nuclear breakout in just a short period of time. The deal's sunset provisions are totally unacceptable. If I allowed this deal to stand, there would soon be a nuclear arms race in the Middle East. Everyone would want their weapons ready by the time Iran had theirs. Making matters worse, the deal's inspection provisions lack adequate mechanisms to prevent, detect, and punish cheating, and don't even have the unqualified right to inspect many important locations, including military facilities. Not only does the deal fail to halt Iran's nuclear ambitions, but it also fails to address the regime's development of ballistic missiles that could deliver nuclear warheads. Finally, the deal does nothing to constrain Iran's destabilizing activities including its support for terrorism. Since the agreement, Iran's bloody ambitions have grown only more brazen. In light of these glaring flaws, I announced last October that the Iran deal must either be renegotiated or terminated. Three months later, on January 12th, I repeated these conditions. I made clear that if the deal could not be fixed, the United States would no longer be a party to the agreement. Over the past few months, we have engaged extensively with our allies and partners around the world, including France, Germany, and the United Kingdom. We have also consulted with our friends from across the Middle East. We are unified in our understanding of the threat and in our conviction that Iran must never acquire a nuclear weapon. 
After these consultations, it is clear to me that we cannot prevent an Iranian nuclear bomb under the decaying and rotten structure of the current agreement. The Iran deal is defective at its core. If we do nothing, we know exactly what will happen. In just a short period of time, the world's leading state sponsor of terror will be on the cusp of acquiring the world's most dangerous weapons. Therefore, I am announcing today that the United States will withdraw from the Iran nuclear deal. In a few moments, I will sign a presidential memorandum to begin reinstating U.S. nuclear sanctions on the Iranian regime. We will be instituting the highest level of economic sanction. Any nation that helps Iran in its quest for nuclear weapons could also be strongly sanctioned by the United States. All right, did you hear this? It is not a sanction only on Iran. He made it clear, this guy, he don't play games. Because sanctions in Iran alone, without putting sanctions in the one who will sponsor them, is useless. So this guy, he made it clear. If you are going to arm or assist our enemies, you are our enemy. And this is what I like about this guy. And now they knew that this guy, when he says something, he do it. You see, there's many people that speak. They make too much speeches. Like I, I remember once, uh, there's a guy, uh, uh, you know, uh, he, he want to, like, in, in school, you know, we were, we were like, you know, teenage. He go to everybody, you want to fight? You want to fight? You want to fight? You want to fight? But nobody want to fight him anyway. But he is like, he think because people, they want to fight him. He's like, a, a brave. You want to fight? You want to fight? And then he came to a guy. He said, yeah, I want to fight. So what the guy he said, so I just want to know if you want to fight or not. I can ask to meet you. <laughs> so I was going from one to one. You want to fight? Huh? You want to fight? The guy said, no, no, man, I don't want to fight. You want to fight? You want to fight? This guy, when he say I want to fight, it's mean he want to fight. So now whoever want to do business with Iran, he knew that he mean every word he say. This is not Hillary Clinton. This is not potato, tomato, Obama. This is different man. He is the real deal. So you want to say, I want to fight with him? Well, you better get ready. He don't say things he don't mean. In reinstating U.S. nuclear sanctions on the Iranian regime, we will be instituting the highest level of economic sanction. Any nation that helps Iran in its quest for nuclear weapons could also be strongly sanctioned by the United States. America will not be held hostage to nuclear blackmail. We will not allow American cities to be threatened with destruction and we will not allow a regime the chance death to america to gain access to the most deadly weapons on earth today's action sends a critical message the united states no longer makes empty threats when i make promises i keep them do you see it this is the main message no longer make empty threat. What does that mean? Do you know guys what he's saying? He's saying that all the one before me, they were they were a bunch of uh, of uh, I don't want to use the word. <laughs> and this is true. Big mouth. They talk too much. They so you know countries they they lost respect for us. You see, when Obama he went to Saudi Arabia, anyone remember how many people wait for him in the airport? Who remember? How many people went to the airport when Ob Obama? The, the 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 president of USA you see forget who is he he is the president of USA imagine two people wait for him in the airport as if he's a dog you see if you want to receive mail from different country from official you send more than two the president of USA two people they were waiting for him in the airport when Trump he went to Saudi Arabia how many people were waiting for him? 
the whole country is waiting what is the different what happened it's the same country and America is not different you will just replace the president do you see what can happen to your country if you have a wrong president either people can you know respect you and you see in the Middle East people don't respect really. people they fear there's no respect it's about fear everything is about who can intimidate who those people they were intimidated badly by by Trump they knew he is powerful and they knew he is not a potato like the one who was before him we cannot make this guy we, can, we cannot afford making him angry the previous one is a potato anyway he's corrupt we just pay him some money he will shut up this guy he made it clear you don't disrespect America so when we he went there the whole country is waiting in the airport And not only that, they brought for him 60, 60 kings of the Muslims countries, 60, to pay respect to his majesty, the king of America. Can you believe it? This guy, he did not come just to make the king of Saudi Arabia. They brought for him 60 king to kiss his ass. And he was escorting them about what to do and what not to do. And who dare to say no? This guy, when he say, I will make America great again, he mean it. And actually he is doing things for the benefit of Europe too. Because European are more close to Iran from us. I mean, geography. So Iranian, they can hurt Europe easier. Before the missile of Iran can arrive to USA, we will destroy any, try even to get a close. But if you are in Europe, a missile can be in your land in five minutes. So today is a good day. And I'm really happy to see Trump making such a decision. I don't want to stay long with you guys. Today, I wanted just to speak about politics. And we will not mix it with something else. I hope that you understand the point I'm trying to deliver. And you agree with me or not, this is your business. However, for me, I like to share my point of view, especially I am coming from there. You see, for me, I see things different from many people in the West because I am coming from the Middle East so you are as, as a person who grew up all your life in different country different language different culture you will not understand really as much what we see because simply I am from there we see things differently we understand it differently and you better to listen to us in order to get a better conclusion and you don't need to agree with us because as I said everybody he see things from his point of view it's like you know looking at the house there's somebody he have a view of the front and somebody have the view of the back and somebody have a view of you from the roof because he's in the airplane all of us we are seeing the same house but everybody he have different view and based in your position you make your review into description Iran as a government today is a very evil government those who speak about peace well do you want peace or you want to freedom is is peace more important from freeing 80 million people from slavery women if they take hijab off they get arrested and they are beating them and they put them in jail and they rape them if somebody said I am an atheist they hang him as if he is a rat if somebody he is a gay, they kill him. If somebody he convert out of Islam, the different religion, they kill him. So, what peace you are talking about? This is not peace. This is war. This is terrorism. Terrorism is not only a group. It's called ISIS. Terrorism is you terrifying your citizen and killing them for not agreeing with you. 
That is the truth. You see, in USA, a hooker, a hooker, a whore, she make a case against Trump. That is the beautiful thing about America. A hooker. I mean, do you know what hooker mean? <laughs> Still, she's alive. Imagine if a hooker made a case against a Muslim president. Not only the hooker will disappear, her family, the neighbors, the, the you know, everybody who say hello to her will disappear from the world. In America, a filthy hooker, she can make a case against the president, a porn star. In order to have the Middle East free from Islam, you need to give them a freedom. The major reason for Islam to stay in the Middle East until now, that Islam has no, Muslims have no freedom. How many Muslims in Iran are Muslims? We don't know. Who know who, because who dare to say I'm not a Muslim? How many Muslims in Saudi Arabia? We don't know. Because who dare to say I'm an atheist? Or who dare to say I became a Christian? Nobody knows. No freedom. One flag. One opinion. One color. One religion. Everything is the same. Because there's no freedom. If everybody forced to wear the same uniform, how we know what color people like? You know what I mean? So, peace is not going to happen because we sign an agreement with the regime killing people and discriminating. And that sanction should happen to everybody, including the Saudi, actually. But I see that the Saudi now, they are moving forward for better human right deal. I heard that the Saudi uh, royal crown, he agreed to start or allowing the Christians to build the churches in Saudi Arabia. If this is a true, that's a big movement, never happened before. And we have to appreciate that he is trying to fix the madness of his cult in that land. And then, if this is true, he deserves our support to make him able to fix what is wrong. But Iran, for sure, is running by an evil regime, and we should help the Iranian to earn their life again. Iranian, they don't really care for Islam. You guys, you do not know the Iranian. Until now, even with the regime, if you go and watch watch any movie, any video about Iran, any YouTube video, you will see how the girls, they don't care really for Iran. Uh, you know, they want to have a, a better life. They want to wear different clothes. Nobody want to wear the hijab. But they are using violence on anyone he try not to accept. You see, if you remember last year, when a group of people, they went in the street and they strike against the government, any one of those who they arrested him, men, what, I'm not talking about females now, they raped them. Imagine they are raping men. Why they rape them? The purpose is to humiliate you, to break you. They want to make you feel humiliated forever. And yet they speak that they are people who present God. People who present God, they rape men just because they oppose them. What kind of God is your God? So I am so happy that Mr. Trump, he made a decision like this. This is a happy day for me. This is a happy day for Israel. This is a happy day for everybody who defend freedom. And this is a happy day for the Iranian themselves. Because the Iranian, they lost their hope that America will help them after the sign of the agreement by the filthy Obama. Now, Trump, he will force his rules. And I will not be surprised if he forced this regime without war that they have to agree to give people freedom. And actually, you see, the sanctions of Trump will force the, the regime to give a freedom automatically. Anyone knows why? Anyone knows why? Why that will give more freedom for the for the people in Iran? 
you see when a, when a government is strong they go so tough on their people because they are strong when the economy is strong they go tough in the people because now you have no excuse so they know that the majority of people will not go strike because of hunger they will not go crazy against the government because of sanctions so now the Iranian government in order to avoid the fire is starting inside their country they will go easy on their own people for the government is going to go weaker Iran after today is not the same Iran yesterday and you will see but as I said I hope Trump he will follow his move with more movement he will get more close to the Russian and he will make the Russian agree with us to join us in the sanctions against Iran. This is something the American they feel for a long time. Anyway, guys, I want to say thank you for being here. We are done for today. Tomorrow, around 4.30, mostly, I will be live on air again. So if you like to be with us, join us. And until I say it, until I, you know, we, 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 uh, we, we come here again, uh, Tomorrow we go back to normal and our topic is as usual is about Islam. So if you are a Muslim, if you know a Muslim, if anyone have any question, you can feel free and call me tomorrow live on air as always we do. And I will be happy to answer you. With this, I want to say thank you for being here. May the Lord bless you. And until I see you tomorrow, I say Christ is Lord and Islam is false. Amen to that and see you soon again.